brilliant. When I tell you, brains. I'm telling you brilliant because I grew up with this music, 1980s. It was like the happiest time in my life, my friends, and I just cannot believe that you were, you know, you really were the first person to do this. When you started promoting this on, on social media, tell me I wasn't all over it. I was like, this is incredible, you know? Yeah, yeah, sure. What made you this time? I mean, it's almost 25 years later. Yeah, yeah, I know. Um, we kind of hit it on the head because, um, you know, I grew up a fan of it as well. I, I, I graduated in 1980, so that 85, 89, that was my, that's what I listened to. And um, one day I was just sitting in my house, I was just surfing through YouTube. I was, I wanted to hear some of those songs, just some videos, and it was like nothing on anything. And anything that was done was like grainy and just not well done. So I said, you know what? I always wanted to do documentaries, I used to do regular films. And I said, let me do something I'm really interested in, and let me do a little research, perhaps do a documentary on freestyle music. And, uh, you know, it progressed quickly. And um, and the people that you got involved, I mean, you went to the, the godfather of I freestyle. went to the you main to guy, Sal, yeah. And the funny thing is, I, Sal's a dear friend now. I didn't know Sal, you know, prior to this. And um, he was a main cog. I'm, I'm not gonna lie, without Sal, I wouldn't have the access uh, to the venues or to the artists. It's a very close knit, close knit family. And you know, when I first, even when I first started, people were like uh, apprehensive of opening themselves up to me. And uh, apparently, it's been done before. People have gone to them and never pulled through. So after a while, you just, they didn't really take it too serious until I started shooting on a regular basis. And then they were like, "Wow." This is gonna happen, so here we go. And what I love is that you captured the music, but you also captured the behind the scenes, how they felt. Because there's a little bit of anger, there's a little bit because they've never been able to like go to the next level, get the attention. It's almost like soccer teams in the United right. States, like they don't get the attention sure. they deserve because you have such talented artists yeah. there with the, the octave voices. Sure. And so you were giving them that platform, you know, to yeah. raise awareness, even to like the new generation that never heard of this kind of genre. Well, that's what I wanted, I wanted to bring awareness to people, you know, like kids that, you know, when I say Legend of Freestyle, they think I'm talking about rappers just freestyling. They don't even know what like, freestyle is. So, it, it brings a whole new generation if this is what I'm supposed to do. Awareness. And, and again, um, what I wanted to do is, again, I, I, I have ADHD. So, doing a documentary is a, a whole different animal. So, I wanted to have the truth behind the interviews, but I wanted to have those performances just to keep the story running along. And I think, again, I think we have to pat ourselves on my team on the back, but I think we did a good job. You really did a tremendous job because you did. You know, you could tell the little stories and then you to the jokes and stuff. I think this is going to have some, uh, so much tremendous success, but I also see the following the sequel to this. And what you can do, what you can do is what you said, like the videos, you know, 25 sure. years ago weren't that great. Right. Right. Bring that back, like some of these songs with like the sure. that would be fantastic. Like, there were so many incredible yep. artists that were part of your production That's team. Yeah, Freedom Williams. Freedom too, which was a little different. Yeah. You understand because not only did he have one of the biggest songs in the 90s, but he wasn't a freestyle guy, but he gave his perspective on why he thought freestyle, you know, kind of that did for a while. So it was good to get somebody else's perspective in the movie business, in the music business, excuse me, that's not from that world. So I thought that was super important. I also love my favorite part is Lisa, because everybody's, you know, Lisa's the face of freestyle, Lisa's the face of freestyle, and the first thing she goes, I'm not freestyle. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. right. But, but we she doesn't take herself seriously, but I, I admire her. I mean, as a Latina, She's awesome. growing up in Queens, that you know, she was like before the J Lo. Sure. You know, she had that role that she made female um, Spanish female women give them a platform. Everybody was like Lisa, Lisa, the cool. Yeah, absolutely. Like, everybody was like in love with her and her. You know, again, the way she sang was amazing. Sure. And she really did. And then also, she's a 20 year plus breast cancer survivor. The breast cancer survivor, Grammy winning artist, crossed over. I mean, she's an amazing woman. Yeah, she really is. So you, your team. You have uh, one of uh, our dear friends who spends volumes of you as uh, Eric Hansen. Oh, we got Hansen. Yeah, another character I have. Yes, he's a dear friend of mine. We became friends uh, since this thing is done, and I think he gave me the better candidate views as well. So, he really did. I'm very honest. And I didn't know about his song Silent Morning, and he jumped up and said that he wrote that. Right. It blew my mind. So, right, well, again, I can't, I can't confirm or deny <laughs> it's what he said. He had a piece of paper, and I didn't see it, but if that's the case, uh, He's, had, he's got every right. Yeah, so, talk about it. Yes, yeah, so we talked about a little bit of 
the, uh, the resentment because of like royalties and right, stuff right, right. didn't happen, but it's real world. Yeah. Yeah. And you as an actor and a director with uh, film, how do you jump into the music arena? How did that play? Do you like um, the combination? I, I actually do. We're actually, um, <laughs> funny thing is after this, I'm doing another film, uh, Robert Downey Jr. film. Oh, wonderful. But I just signed on to do the 15th anniversary of the British Invasion. Oh, okay. Which is, again, the same type of thing as this on a bigger level. We got uh, Ringo Starr is in it, uh, Peter Frampton. But even though the star and the talent is a lot bigger, it's the same type of concept. That's amazing. So, yeah, it's cool. Yeah, it's been done, but not to not the, right. the way you're putting it together. Right, so it's pretty cool. I, mean, I don't know how I fell into this, but I enjoy it. Yeah. And I'm saying brilliant. I'm, I'm oh, thank so pleased with my fact. So, you know, just, just keep saying say it five more times. <laughs> I will. I'll write it down. Okay. And, and you're wonderful. I mean, first thing is your family first. Your wonderful yeah. husband, devoted uh, dad. Yes. And um, you just love what you're doing. So this is fantastic. Yeah, you can go to work every day. You know, sometimes it's a thankless job, but you live your life with passion and purpose. That's the biggest thing. So. Dream it, do it. So is that the best advice you can give after? So somebody starting? Yeah, I mean, again, my thing is, listen, if you're in the industry or whatever, don't wait for people to come knock on your doors. You know, if you find you have a wall as an actor, a director, or anything, create something. I mean, this cost nothing to do. But I had a little slow time. I was like, you know what? I want to do this. Just take that step. Just take the step. And most people don't. And you know, I do. Right, but I, the thing is, is, I do all the time. Sometimes it'll fall. But it just blows my mind how people don't. And you just wait and expect. And it just doesn't matter. And it's sad because it's true. Like, I'm in the same point. Sometimes the same is wrong. Come on, come in. Create your own work. That's the best thing. You know, whatever you're passionate about, create it. Don't talk shit. Create shit. That's my important night. And I'm with you. I oh. totally believe that. That's awesome. And now, we're going, and we're going to party at Skyroom. 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 Let's do it. All right. Congratulations. Much success. And talk about it on the internet for me. Thank you. Yes, we will. You will get this next week. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you very much. Enjoy. Let's just freestyle 2016. Check us out. Where can they find more info on it? Uh, right now, we might have a deal with, uh, you know, we have talks on HBO, Netflix, iTunes, uh, so things are progressing. All right, so we'll check the AFR market soon. Oh, okay, fantastic. Oh, yeah. My friends are there. Okay. Check us out. Hi, everyone. I'm back here with Table for Four, and I am so excited to be here with, I know everybody, you've heard this several times, the Godfather Freestyle, the Pioneer Freestyle, Sal Abatello. Congratulations on this beautiful film. Uh, thank you. Amazing. I knew it was going to be special, but it's amazing. It's so crazy. I mean, this is, you, you know, I'm thinking about 25 years, you just mentioned to me, three decades of freestyle music. This is the 30th anniversary of this year. We started in 1985 in the Bronx, uh, in a small club that I had called the Devil's Nest. And uh, I brought in this second generation of Puerto Ricans, and that were making, they were break dancing Ashley, and they were dancing to these great dance records. And I put together, Disco had just uh, faded out, and I put together a Latin sounding disco record called Please Don't Go, and kicked off a whole genre. Boom! Yeah. I mean, I, I can't even tell you, everybody, all your artists, are just so amazing. What I love being Spanish also that you gave, you know, like you just put everybody on the map. Like these kids were working at Bloomingdale's, working at Benetton, and you just put them on the map. A lot of them were in high school too, you know. They're, they're all, they're, a lot of them were in their teens, and uh, you know, they were just finding their own way here in America. Their parents were like, you know, Latin music and salsa, and uh, they found their own way. They were in school speaking English, and when that first record came out, every kid was like, wow, I want to do that. I want to be like her. I want to be like him. And then it just blew up. And me giving them that platform at the Devil's Nest, the place where they could come and meet and talk and uh, co-write and co-produce. And then it just blew up. That's amazing what you've yeah. done. I mean, you're so inspirational. And you have the genre of music. And then to have a sweet that can flavor and resurrect to like the younger generation who have an experience with that. But I love really about this song like that. And I love all kinds of music, but the freestyle, just like everybody I grew up in the 80s, it's just happening. 
takes us back to a time right now we're all grown ups and responsibilities. And it just takes you back to such a really great time. Well, right now that everybody's in their like late 30s, 40s, and 50s, you know, it brings you back to when it was a good time in your place, your first love, you know, where you made your first kiss, your first nightclub, your first dance, you know, your first crew where you hung out on the corner just like in the doo wop days and everybody would sing. And, uh, you know, now they came uh, center stage and all these big venues, Madison Square Garden, Radio City, Mohegan, all around the country, uh, California, all the major cities are doing it, just selling out eight to 10,000 people. But, uh, you know, alone, a lot of them, you know, really can't sell out a venue, but when you put them all together, like, they just knock it out the ballpark. They really do, they really do. And, and, um, and I think the last the artist that you got involved is Jill Terrell. Yeah, Jill, uh, I had to uh, open up a few of the shows, you know, she's a new artist, and, but she, wanted, she was doing some music that was similar to freestyle. So I gave her a shot, opened up on some of the shows, she's a great singer, great performer, and it gave a little flavor of, you know, the new people that are trying to break through. Yeah, hopefully, uh, it'll work out. I feel like you too, so, I mean, when you saw it tonight on the screen, I mean, Saturday night, you're at AMC Theaters, right in Midtown, I mean, how does that feel, like all your hard work, and you know, 30 years, and you're putting it in two hours, they made a, I had a club called the Disco Fever. They made a movie about it called Crush Brew. So I had that experience about before, but seeing this now with the second generation, because they did it with hip hop, and to see that all these kids that have started off, they're teenagers, and they all got their own kids now, that are in their 20s, and to see it up on the big screen, and it was uh, very rewarding, and I felt proud. Because I've been there for 30 years, I, I never stopped doing it. You know, even when things went bad in the 90s, from 93 to 2000, even if I wasn't doing that style of music, I still would try to cook them and keep it alive. And then luckily for me, I did a show in 2000 at a club called Exit, I had my 20th anniversary, and 4,000 people showed up, and that's when we went, oh, I guess by themselves, they can't fill up any venues, but when you put them all in the house yeah, together, yeah. It's incredible. And that's how we found out. I, I re reinvented it again in uh, 2001. But now it's here, to, it's here to stay. It really is here to stay, and it, it's a family. I mean, everybody, I can yeah. see how close they are. So, do you have any favorite uh, stories that you saw, like, you know, that was difficult to bring on, but you made it happen? Do you have any? My, my well, one of my favorite, one of my proudest moments was when we went to Madison Square Garden. Because when we were all popular and all the groups were doing great, we were selling records, and, uh, you know, had great radio play all around the country. We still never went to the garden. And to bring them to the garden uh, 24, 25 years later was very rewarding. And then Radio City just put the final nail in the coffin. To be there, you go to these venues when you're young, and then to be on stage and have all your acts on stage together. We're all together, 16, 17 acts, and we're backstage, and everybody's praying together. And then at the end of the night, they all got on stage together. I made everybody get on stage and sing, we are family, we have a picture. And everybody on the stage, and that, that was great. When you're driving by 52nd Street, you look up, you see freestyle extravaganza, freestyle fever, Radio City Musical, you know, Somebody took a picture and sent it to me. I was like, wow. That's amazing. That's so special. And now, I mean, you went from the music industry. Now you're in film. So, how do you see this career balancing out? Now you're uh, making well, movies. Yes, yeah, so this is my first uh, project. You know, on my own. Uh, I did, uh, Steve brought me the project. And uh, hopefully, uh, we'll move on. I, I got a lot of stuff I got to do. Uh, Russell Simmons, who everybody knows, is. Uh, talking about doing my life story with hip hop. Okay. So I started back in 77 in Bronx, where this was hip hop in those years. So uh, hopefully, and then someone else do a documentary on me. So a few things in the works. All right, that's and Steve Stanley, I mean, honestly, he is brilliant. Yes. This is a, I, I'm like, I love this music and all the artists involved, and I'm like, I feel like he even has one of done. Everybody's talked about it, started oh, yeah. it, but I mean, he got it done. I've been approached by people for the last 10, 15 years. Steve's the first person and stepped up to the plate and we finally got it done. We worked together great, we just clicked, we became good friends during it, and we put together a nice piece, and like you said, you didn't even see the finished product. It's still got to be edited together and some other things added in, which is just going to make it even better. Yeah. Well, we wish you so much love, 
success with this film and many other projects that we've been working on. Legends of Freestyle. Yep. And um, I'm predicting this is definitely going to be an HBO prize. I know it. And wow. I mean, I even know the sequel. Yeah. Yeah. So, much love, happy, and thank you so much for sharing your story. With oh my God. And anything that you can say to inspiring uh, musicians out there? Peace out, fever, catch it, but yeah, you know what? Uh, there's always going to be a new genre, and everything started with a movement. So all you teenagers out there, you know, don't give up. You know, all the last music's do up, disco, hip hop, freestyle, salsa, all started with the teen movement. So get out there. You just have the equipment now. You know, you don't got to go to a studio. You, you, you got the computers at home, and it's pretty easy now to you know make your own music. And you just got to work hard and be on the internet all day. Like I ask you one last question before we go. So when three decades ago versus now with social media and iTunes and having soul music and it's so important to put it on the radio, how different is it now with um, promoting music? Back then I liked it better because back then you had record pools and the DJ was the key factor. And now the DJ is not the key factor because the DJ can't play anything new anymore. So back then, you know, you could bring your record into a nightclub and they might be playing it that night. Whereas today, that can never happen. Thank you again, Sal and the Godfather, the Mecca, the pioneer of freestyle, and freestyle is you today, right? You know it, baby. 2015, I'm saying it. Catch you. Thank you. Gotta give you a hug. Thank you so much. Good night, Table 4. We're back with Table 4. And I'm here with Aaron Hansen and the uh, guru of freestyle, Mr. Sal Abitello. And everybody's loving you. This night wouldn't be possible without you. This night wouldn't be possible without you. So thank you. Can, can, we, can I just interject? Absolutely. One, first of all, this is not about me. Really? No. <laughs> it totally isn't. Don't let the clothes fool you, Sal. Be nice. Sal Abitello, for a lot of you that don't know, is the founder and creator of LL Cool J, Russell Simmons, Ron DMC, Cover Girls, Fat Boys, Naomi, and, and, and so much more. It's, it's Lizette Melendez. Come on, Sal. Can you help me, bro? I'm good. He, this is this is the Fever Music, Fever Records. A lot of people really don't understand the impact this man has made on the entire world. Not just your, 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 your neighborhood or your city, on the world. He's brought so much joy and so much fun and so much love and so many good times. And they probably made a lot of babies too. Oh, for sure. <laughs> A lot of fever babies. A lot of people don't know that Judy knows, but I just wanted to say I, I'm so honored and I'm so blessed to have known this man who I see as my one of my older brothers. I don't want to call him my uncle because we're not that. Yeah, seriously. Uh, a lot of people don't realize it, and it almost gets me teary eyed when I think back to when we were doing our tours and our shows. And I think about all that the impact that he's had on this business. And anytime you see a huge pop, real fun tour, it's because he put it together. And when they and, and when and when they called me and asked me that they want when Steve called me and asked me to do this film, I said, we gotta call Sal. We gotta call Sal. And here he is. So please put your hands together. Yeah! A song for us. Yes. Oh, wow. He is? Yeah. <laughs> it's called Salad Night. Oh, you just did that. He's bad. No, right. he's going to sing Inside Frank, joke. Frank Sinatra. Go. Yeah. I'm good. Yeah, I'm good. There we go. I did, I'm a, I did I'm a, it my way. He did it his way, way and he can do it for go. all of us. So thank you very Sal, much. Sal, I will tell him that. Yes, Sal. Yes. Let me take a picture. Thank you again. Oh, oh, oh. Right. Picture, picture. Thank you guys. We are here with the producer for Legends of Freestyle. I am so excited. This movie was awesome. I am a diehard fan of freestyle music, and to see Steve Sandals make this feature film just kick butt. I can't say it's a
documentary. It's a feature film. It takes five. Maria Maria's beautiful girlfriend here too. So, what do you? I mean, this was really a passionate. You know, I'll tell you something. Thank you, Judy. I'll tell you something. Um, First of all, this could not have happened without Steve Stanulis. Absolutely, he is beyond the man brilliant. Is amazing. I keep telling him he, he is, is brilliant. beyond brilliant. He is. Very, this, very good description. This hasn't been done in 25 years. This no one had the balls to do it. And I honestly, no one had the cojones. I, I wanted to do this. this I'm the female you know what he, you know what he said to me? I'm so impressed. You know what he said? He, he goes to me. He goes to me. He's Hanson. I said, dude, you know me. You've spoken to everyone in the entertainment business. You know me. Don't come to me and ask me for the. Don't ask me to tell you the truth. If you don't want to hear the truth. If he can truth. handle the truth. Right, right. And so he I'm gonna can tell handle you what it is. the truth. And, 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 and I'm, I'm going to put it like this. I don't know if it's going to be edited, but I, I'm Donald Duck. I don't give a fuck. I'm going to tell you what it is. So many artists that are afraid to stand out and tell the truth about what happened from the late 80s to now. Okay? That is owed so much money because they're so afraid of being blackballed. So they can't get concerts. So they so so a lot of them are very nice and smiling and everything's cool. Fuck that shit. Where is my motherfucking money, man? If you gave me my money, man, I would have to do these shows for two thousand dollars. Excuse my expression. It is L T N. You know what that means? Lick these nuts. Where the fuck is my money, man? Give me my money. It's unfair. I like this LTN. Well, you know, I am so proud of Legends of Freestyle. So you guys are gonna. Well, it was it a blessing to meet Steve Stanulis and you, Judy. Because me and my baby, we, we, we do, me and Maria Maria, we do so much stuff, uh, entertainment related, film related, acting related. She just did a commercial. Oh, yeah. Yeah, her first commercial. Oh, yeah. And uh, All she's, in so, Spanish. she's so happy. And in Spanish, which All is cool. Spanish. And um, of course, we were shooting our horror film in, in February. I told you about that. We, we spent the night at her house. We felt, we, we, we loved her. They ignored me. But we fell in love with her dog. Yes, yeah, her dog. Yeah. But I hear that the dog is anti you smoking. smoking. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny because when you guys went to sleep, he walked up to me and said, puff, 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 puff. Well, he broke all his cigarettes in the morning. So yeah. That's a different story. He thought it was weed. So he ripped it apart. Oh, he got upset. Oh, he ripped it. No, I'm kidding. Oh, I'm kidding. boy. He okay, is well, anti -smoking. No, I'm not asking about that. You're a beautiful you night here. I'm very happy to be in New York City, Saturday Woo! night. You know, really This sweet girl's off the movie. chain. You need to follow her. She's off the chain. Show her some you. love. Show some support to artists and producers and directors and create the true creativity that has the cojones. Yeah, you know, 
which really are inspirational because you get to balance your family life and you get to see us at Passion and Holland and I'm very blessed. I put it on and off for a really long time and didn't do what I wanted to do and did what I thought was the right thing to do by everybody else. And I had like this aha moment that I just thought, I'm putting it out there in the universe. I to do what's right for me and it's resonating with people. So I feel really very blessed to be able to do this. Are you working on anything right now? Yeah, I mean, November 14th, my first album is going to be out. And I'm really excited about it. You really are, and you're making an effort, and you're probably going to be one of the last artists to join this music, because it's so small, and you can tell them, you know, what's going on with you, and you're going to change it. Accepted and invited in, and to be sharing the stage with the acts that I have had. Today, our people who have had radio hits, you know, 30 years deep. You know, I'm not off that island yet. I don't have that yet. So for me, it's much younger than I am. So I think I've been around longer with the British one of two. So where can our fans find them if they want to look out for content? And everything that goes through as a filmmaker, I'm telling you. 
comes and yeah. wake up and yeah. there and then family life, making sure they're all set, oh, yeah. we take off. I mean, it is a jungle. Yeah, I wish we could just pick up and just uh, show up at shows, but there's like this whole behind the scenes uh, right, process go that him. goes on. We're mothers too, so it's like, and, and we have jobs. <laughs> we have real jobs, so it's like, you know, this is a lot, but this is, I will tell you, we don't only do this for the fans. We, we do it for ourselves too. We love this. There's no way you can do this if you didn't love it yourself first. And then just knowing you guys are out there to receive, always keep us busy, is just a blessing. And also, like, as moms, like, you know, this is, like, what fills you guys up, you know, you're amazing moms, but this is your little bit of grown-up time that you get to give back and see how much fun that you're out there. I mean, was it shocking to you to see the reception that you got to that movie? Did you expect that? I'm going to say I did expect it because the fans have been so awesome. I mean, it's not, I mean, I, I think every time we get on stage, we are shocked that we are still relevant and that we're always received so well. So I think it's like we should just stop being shocked and just go on. So I think this was like, this was awesome. This was like, it was just, I think we were just shocked for ourselves. We were like, oh my god, that happened. Yeah, so I think for us, we're just a little. Surprise. That's awesome. You guys deserve it. And how about as a community? Are you guys, are you friends with the, everybody CKA? Oh my gosh, it's so much fun on the road. And you're friends with everybody. It's like a big family. Yeah. I mean, we... You don't have any dirt to share with us? <laughs> I wish there was dirt. It's not that juicy. It's like we've got freestyle coke. We have dirt, but we keep it in the house. That's the <laughs> yes. and people don't do that. So that's really good code. So it's you're never, teaching people out there. It's never anything that dramatic. It's just you know, like so it's, so much it's fun. a family. So you get in, you get into fights with your brothers and sisters, or your moms, Absolutely. your aunts, your uncles. Same thing. Very cool. And where can our fans and your new fans uh, find you? FeverRecords.com. Yeah. That's our social media. <laughs> and we, you know, we have our personal little Facebook and you can keep it out there. Um, find us. Come search for us. We're mysterious. Okay. Much love and much gratitude for all the beautiful music you guys have done. And really, you know, like it just really, you know, the nine to five, the going to work, the, the light, the hustle and bustle, and then you know, take the time out to listen to your music. And it's just incredible. Oh, so, thank you so much. And congratulations. Now you have a film too. So not only are you film guys, stars. Yes, you are. <laughs> we could be an IMDb. Yes, right? Stan. Yes, yes, tell Stan to make sure he's yes. you on IMDb. I want to be no. on IMDb. <laughs> I think you needs to pop up. Oh, you should well. be there. We're part of the cast. <laughs> you are. You are. So very excited to be here with them. Thank you for taking the time IMDb. to talk to us. Thank you so much. Thank you, Judy. And congrats, and everybody. Thank you so much. Tonight. Where are you guys for me? In Queens. <laughs> We're so I bad. We just show up. We do. We're like, where are we going? Wait, oh, Queens today? Yeah. Okay, what's the direction? <laughs> I remember <laughs> Zach, Emerald City. Oh all my god, all those yeah. old school yeah. Yeah. Oh, You know what's fun? But we don't know we're performing with other people. And we show up and we're like, Judy! I didn't know you were going to be out. We just show up and perform. <laughs> Alright, I think it's Swami at your concert tonight. No, he's got his own show going on. Okay, he ran out of here. Yeah, yeah. He's coming with us. Uh, and we'll meet the guys there. TK. Yeah. Oh, okay, so. Thank you again so much. Thank you. Look out for so much more from them. Thank you.